Hey guys, Biggie here and welcome to the ultimate Wabajack guide. In this guide, I'm going to tell you what Wabajack is, how it compares to Nexus collection system, and all the prerequisites you need, and I'm going to give you some examples of commonly failing issues that hopefully you'll be able to revisit this video. And um, if you run into any issues for whatever reason, you can check it out because I promise it'll answer 99% of questions you might have. Now, first things first, what is Wabajack? Well, Wabajack is an automatic installer tool for modless. Basically, it downloads mods automatically for you. It installs the mods automatically for you and it puts it all together and uh, you can play. It's pretty much a one-click install. The caveat is that that uh, system of it being automatic is dependent on you having Nexus Premium. Now, if you don't have Nexus Premium, it will still auto install and do everything for you. It just can't automatically download. So you just have to manually click the download button however many times based on um, essentially how many mods are in the list. Now, um, Nexus Premium, there's ways to get it nowadays without uh, having to pay. If you're a mod author, you can get free Nexus Premium. So consider maybe making some mods if you can't afford Nexus Premium or your country doesn't allow Nexus Premium for whatever reason. Just make some mods, put them on Nexus and eventually you'll get Nexus Premium. Now you can check out the gallery here at wabajack.org. You can see that it actually supports a lot of different games. Basically, almost any game that has Mod Organizer 2 support is supported by Wabajack. But currently the most popular games for Wabajack are Skyrim Special Edition and Fallout 4. But there are other games too, like Cyberpunk, Oblivion, Morrowind, etc. Now, how does Wabajack compare to Nexus Collection System? Well, Nexus Collections, you guys might know, uses Vortex instead of Mod Organizer 2. Now, Vortex comes with its own downsides, including it needs a lot more space on your PC. So Wabajack, Modless, how they install things once you have your mod list installed you can just get rid of the downloads if you don't want them for whatever reason and it'll save on a bunch of space uh, space whereas vortex kind of keeps mods in three different spots once you deploy the mods so it potentially takes up a ton more space on your pc now the other thing is webjack lists in general this is just a generalization. I've been saying all collections are bad, but in general, Wabajack lists tend to be a lot better curated than Nexus collections. And it doesn't have anything to do with some of these top collections that you see. Gates to Sovereign Guard, shout out to J Serpa. Great example of a really good collection. But I myself could go and click on a bunch of random mods and slap them together into a collection it <laughs> really easily. So there's no sense of a kind of quality check when it comes to collections whereas for mod list authors the process is a little bit uh, tougher for making a wabajack list so you have to at least have some better technical understanding of putting together a working mod list in order to use uh, wabajack to share your mod list with others so there's usually there's a lot less wabajack lists out there than there are collections like i said once again not all collections are bad and vortex some people prefer it um but in general wabajack lists are very very well made so if you've been using collections maybe consider checking out wabajack now getting started you'll go to wabajack.org click the big download button and then you'll download the wabajack.exe I recommend taking this, uh, you can cut and paste it into wherever you want, but I would uh, recommend putting it directly on the root of whatever your drive you're using is. By root of the drive, I mean directly on your C drive, directly on your D drive, E drive, F drive, and make a folder on that drive called Wabajack. Then place it in there. As you can see, I have a version in there already. But once you do that, just double click and it will install everything for you. And then it'll have you log into Vortex. If for whatever reason you don't get the prompt, you can click the gear icon here at the top and then log into um, 
sorry, uh, Nexus Mods. Log in with your Nexus Mods account. Now, from here, you can browse the mod lists that are available to you. It'll default to all lists. And you can choose the game you want here. I'll go to Skyrim Special Edition. And then you can also show unofficial lists. Uh, for the purposes of this video, there's not really a big difference between official and unofficial lists. So I would recommend to anybody new to Webjack, just always click that unofficial list button. If you want to see some spicier lists, you can click the show NSFW, not safe for work list button. But here you can see all the lists that are on the Wabajack UI. Now, if you want a list that's not on the UI, and there are plenty of lists that have their Wabajack files available on other places, like GitHub or uh, Nexus, here is Heirs of the Concord for an example. What you do is you just download that Wabajack file after you've installed Wabajack, and you can just go and double click it. And it'll take you directly to the installation uh, prompt here, which we'll see by uh, choosing another list. So for purposes of this, I'll use my own Lorem as an example. It'll download the Wabjack file. And then after it downloads the Wabjack file, you can click the play button here. And it'll send you, for most lists, it'll send you to the website, which will have a bunch of useful information. Now, when I say useful information, this information is necessary. I'm gonna go over it in just a second, but um, you can choose your mod list install location. And this, I would again recommend putting on the root of your drive, so most mod lists I would recommend keeping on a solid state drive if you have one available. For some mod lists, it's a requirement. It'll just make the game run faster. It'll make it more stable. So in this case, you can put it on your F drive or wherever you want. And then by default, so if I make a new folder, call it whatever I want, select that folder. Don't make it a long, uh, you know, games slash wabajack slash wabajack list slash pool list slash war lorem you want to keep the path as simple as possible by default the resource download location will be the same folder but it'll make a downloads folder in it now here is a good trick if you want to save space let's say uh, lorem for example is 550 gigabytes total to install well, 250 gigabytes of that are the downloads. So if you only have, let's say 400 gigs free on your solid state drive, but you have another drive available, you don't have to keep this resource download location on the same drive. You can put this wherever you want. So if you have another drive, maybe an external hard drive or something, you can point this to somewhere else. I have, for example, a dedicated drive just for my Skyrim uh, downloads, and then I can do that. And then I can click the uh, play button here and it will start installing. If you are updating a mod list, make sure to check the overwrite installation button. There's never any risk really to just always check this button if you want to get used to that habit. But whenever you're updating an existing mod list, make sure to check that out. Now, a prerequisite for most mod lists, I will show you a few things. First of all, I'm going to put the link down below for this Tom's hardware page on setting up a page file. Different mod lists um, have different page file requirements, but essentially you'll want to go to system properties and then you'll go to the advanced tab, go to settings, go to advance and under virtual memory, you'll want to change this. And you'll find whatever your fastest drive is. And depending on the instructions of the mod list, you can set the custom size, both the initial and the maximum to the same number. You'll see a lot of people suggest 40,000 uh, megabytes for both the initial and the maximum, which uh, I keep 60,000, but uh, it just depends on which mod list you're playing. And then you can click OK and apply that. This is very crucial, very vital for making your mod list stable. The other thing, 
for NVIDIA users, you are going to want to go to your 3D settings. And it's a good idea to have your shader cache size to 10 gigabytes. This again, for NVIDIA users, this will make it a lot more stable. Now, whenever you download a list, you might encounter some failing issues. I recommend going, whenever you have any sort of issue with a mod list, I recommend if they do have a support Discord available, go to that support Discord and see if other people are, ha are having those issues. But another thing is Wabajack will also spit out a log. So go to your Wabajack folder to go to the version and then go to logs and it'll give you a log of what's going on. And usually at the very bottom of the log, you'll get uh, direct download links if the uh, download is failing from sites like a mega file or whatever other site it might be, maybe um, GitHub, and you'll just be able to copy and paste that link. And then wherever your downloads folder is, just uh, once you install that file, just put it in there. If it's a uh, Google Drive though, you'll get a random, uh, let's say string of characters like this. And what you can do is you just go to drive.google.com slash file slash D slash, and then you put in whatever that um, ID is, and it'll uh, take you directly to that download. Uh, the other issue is this is a very common Skyrim special edition issue because Bethesda and Steam provide two different versions of rare curios. So basically, depending on how the mod list installed it, what you'll want to do is, um, I mean, this is why it's kind of convoluted. If the mod list uses a capital C curios, what you'll want to do is just go to your uh, Skyrim special edition properties. And then you'll want to just go and go to the uh, installed files and verify integrity of game files. And then it will install the uh, capital C version of Rare Curios and then try the installation. If that fails, then that means it's using the lowercase Curios version. So you, what you'll want to do is you go to your Skyrim Steam install, your special edition data folder and delete everything that starts with CC. So all these files, um, just want to delete them and then launch Skyrim special edition and install all of the creation club content while in game and do not alt tab. Finally, once the mod list is installed, I'm going to show you an example of things you can end up doing. Um, one final thing to know, if you use OneDrive, I recommend disabling it. If you use an antivirus, uh, especially things like Windows Defender and whatnot, make sure to add an exclusion for the folder where you install the list. It'll again help with stability. Now, almost every single mod list uses uh, Mod Organizer 2. In fact, I think I'm pretty sure they all use Mod Organizer 2 as the Mod Organizer system. For those who aren't familiar with Mod Organizer 2 and are used to Vortex, you can install stuff pretty easily with Mod Organizer 2. Um, keep in mind when you do this for most lists, you are voiding official support from the mod list author. But what you can do is you go to Tools, Settings, you go to Nexus, and then you can associate with Download uh, with Manager Links. What this will do is whenever you go to Nexus and you click to download a mod, it'll automatically install the mod. It'll download the mod into the downloads folder. So let us find a random mod as an example so I can show you guys. There's a new texture mod. So I'll go click on this. And as you can see, it downloaded it directly here. If for whatever reason you need to do uh, an archive that can't download with the download link, you can just click this button right here, install a new mod from an archive and find whichever mod you're looking for. Now, the cool thing about Mod Organizer 2 is before you even have it installed, you can find where you want it to go in your load order. This is a dragon mod, so maybe I'll put it next to my other dragon related stuff. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere over here, but uh, let's see. Dragons. 
There are dragons and dragon priests. I can just take this, drag it, and drop it into wherever I want in the load order and click OK. And then there we go. The mod is in the correct order. And then I can just click this button here. And then it will be enabled. By default, the plugin will go at the bottom of the load order. So if there is a plugin, you want to make sure that the plugin on the right side here under the plugin list also is where you want it to be. If the mod list that you're playing has different profiles, you can manage the profiles here uh, just at the top. You can switch between them. A lot of times uh, profiles have saves saved into the actual profiles folder. So you can go here uh, and then you can see all of your saves. If you need to delete saves, backup saves, things like that. Uh, usually when you're overwriting, your saves are going to be safe. I've heard some people say that when they overwrited for an update, their saves got deleted. I haven't personally had that happen, um, but you can always back them up if you're unsure of where the saves are. Anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much it for uh, Wabajack. Hopefully this will answer most of your guys' questions. It's very, very crucial that you read the readme for whatever list you install if you want it to be a stable and good experience. Anyways, I will catch you guys next time.